Welcome to the chairs. There are three of us today, but that shouldn't really change the format of the show. Well, it's no all, longer really. the four chairs, so we should be good. Yeah, okay, well, today's today, today. This day. This day. <laughs> our topic is. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so friggin' out of it all of a sudden. Oh, well, we usually film at night. That's true. So it's always been tonight's topic. It's not. It's hardly ever been today's topic. So that's true. This day's topic. Where are we, Nick? Is gonna be uh, just a general overview of the Resident Evil series, like all the games, all the movies, that type of stuff. We're not gonna go super in depth. Just you know our opinions of how the series has evolved. Okay. Um, and the different iterations on that. Let's start at. Let's start at the right spot here. Very first time. Very first time we played Resident Evil. Yeah, because that, that was the introduction. Yeah. I, I imagine nobody was introduced through the movies, right? Oh, no, hell no. You were probably introduced through the game. Go ahead and tell me which game, first time. Right, then we'll, wanting, start, we'll start it off like that. I'm wanting to say I did see the first game back in high school. Yeah. I don't remember actually playing through it until I played through and beat Resident Evil 2. All right. And that one stood out as like, Probably my favorite one out of the entire series to this date, other than four. Two and four are my favorites because, well, I like Leon. His voice acting sucked in the second one, but you gotta feel bad for the poor guy. He's a rookie cop, first day on the job, drives in for his new job. He's like, oh man, there's gonna be a party and everything. I get to meet my new co workers. Everyone is fucking dead. <laughs> Entire CDs destroyed, filled with zombies. This guy's going, what the hell is going on? The second one, I'm not going to jump into that, but I do have something to say about the second one. Cause so, it, it, I don't know. I just connected with the character, and I think that's that's probably why I was glad I started with the second one. But I did see the first one, and I thought it was pretty cool. So that's that's what made me want to play the second. So what's up, guy? I, I was introduced to uh, Resident Evil 2. Damn. A lot of people usually miss out on the first game in a series. My, uh, my cousin had it. I watched him play it. And I remember, because I was a little kid, I remember because the game scared me. I'll right. admit, some of the old Resident Evil games freaked me the hell out, too. Okay, here, I'm, I almost feel bad because I, I'm like the only person that really got the genuine first experience. It wasn't, it didn't belong to me. I went over to my friend's house, he was like my next door neighbor, and he had Resident Evil 1. Or rather, his grandmother had Resident Evil 1. <laughs> That's really? a little ridiculous. To me, to me it seems ridiculous, but when I think about it, like, we're gonna be old ass dudes, and like, our grandchildren are gonna be like, you know, coming up, and we're gonna be playing games and introduce them to games, so that's not gonna be weird for us, but but for like for our generation coming up, it is kind of weird that a grandma introduced me to Resident Evil. It, it is. What's that, Grandma? Resident Evil. <laughs> hey, Grandma, what you and Grandpa been doing lately? Oh, me and your Grandpa been sitting here playing Resident Evil. Damn yeah, skippy, study. Watch <laughs> me blow this fucking zombie's head off. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird, but but I go over there and I see this game. And he's like halfway through it, or rather she's halfway through it, because he was playing her save file. And I was like, this is wild, you know? Like, I was so excited about it. But it, it didn't really give me that impact yet, because I was just watching and seeing what looked to me like an action game almost. So I go out, and I like, I bought this game, like, it, it was like a week later. Like, I immediately was like, look, dude, I got stuff to do. And he was like, cool, would you play this game? I was like, I'm sorry, man. I was like, I really, now I really do have stuff to do. So I go to my dad, and I'm like, I'm mowing the lawn right now. I mowed the lawn. <laughs> then I went back to my neighbors and told his grandma, I was like, I was like, you know, if he's doing that, I can just mow the lawn. It's no, no issue. So I mowed his lawn. Then I went down the street. But I went to this, I went lawn. to this, uh, there's this area of houses, like, there's like all of them have the same address, I used to call them the 309, and... Oh yeah, I remember that now. So I go down there, and I knock on everybody's door. I'm mowing lawns. Doing the lawns. So I did two lawns in there, 
Then I went up to uh, this dude. He owns like this giant field. I don't know why. It never made sense to me. He just had a field. field. He really does. He, you can see it from the house, actually. Yeah. And he just owns it. He does nothing with it. It's just a giant, like, three acres of land that's just there. <laughs> he, like, even, he even owns part of the it. woods for no reason at all. He does nothing with it. It's just there. It's not a park. Nobody's allowed on it. He just likes to mow it. Maybe he's just keeping it till property values somehow miraculously skyrocket in our area. So I go up and I talk Highly to that dude. I knock on his door. I'm like, hey, I, I wanna. I'm, I'm looking for stuff to do. I'm trying to afford a game. And he was like, and this dude did something for me that, in a way, I kind of appreciate. It taught me something that was kind of bizarre that I was taught this by a neighbor. But he kind of helped me understand. Not the value of money, but the actual way that work, for lack of a better term, works. He said, here's what I'll do for you, kid. I have that field and this house. I don't feel like mowing. But what I'll do for you is I'll pay you five thirty-five dollars an hour to mow. Now, without thinking about it, I'm a kid, and I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. That's big money. But what I didn't put into thought was, since I was excited, how quick I was going to do this work. I was like booking with that lawnmower. I was like, I've got to keep this game. I've got to keep this game. And because of it, I get up there and he's like, okay, let's just round this up. 20-something bucks. And that's where you learned the first mistake. And I was like, oh, come on! Because <laughs> he had a tiny yard. The field is what took time, but I was, I was revving that. You were hauling ball. Day. Yeah, like I was freaking out. But anyways, I finally get the money out by this game. I go home, I turn it on. And dude, the first scene, it's so cheesy as shit. But when I was a kid... It didn't feel that wait, way. Wait, you mean like the opening sequence where, yeah. you know, guy gets eaten by dog and everyone's like, well, oh! It running. wasn't just that. It was like they were live actors. And for some reason, my mind back then, what we didn't realize was these were like pre-rendered, terrible, like, actors. I like, had seen them before, though, because I played a lot of PC games. But what we were told is that this was how good the graphics were. So, to me, it didn't feel like actors. Even though I knew it was, it felt like this was just how good the game was. Until you got into the mansion. You're like, what no, happened to the actors? even then, like back then, I thought the graphics were amazing. Yeah. Like, I wasn't fooled into seeing, like, now I can look at it like, oh, this blocky mess. But back then, I was freaking out. Like, well, back then, Jill had rounded mess. boobies. <laughs> Which was amazing, because, like, everyone else had polygon boobs. Like... Laura Croft was walking around with two spikes on her chest, <laughs> and this chick had rounded she, boobies. She, she had uh, Madonna <laughs> syndrome. Yeah. That's what I like to call that. But it, that's not the only thing that, of but course, yeah. I was noticing. Okay, at the time, that was a big that thing that I was noticing. That was one of the biggest things, okay, I was still, noticing. I was noticing. I was like, oh my god, was. boobs. But, uh, um. but anyways, I, dude, I'll never forget it, man. They go into this, and you can hear that echo. And that, like when they were talking, to me... I played a couple games that had voice acting, but nothing. Even nothing though it was that had so the bad, atmosphere interact with the voice acting. Yeah, so then I go in this room and this is happening, yada yada. I walk back, I see this dude in the corner, and for some reason it's not dawning on me that this is a zombie game. It just didn't feel like it did. Nothing was going on. And I came around that corner. You're like, hey got, man, what the, oh my lights, god! I got the lights turned off, dude, and I'm like playing, it's nighttime, and I wasn't thinking about nothing. I was just like ready to play my game. And this dude turned around. It went to this cutscene, and that dude turned around like, Ugh. and I was like, oh no! <laughs> and the dude got up, and I was like fumbling with the controller, like, get away from that guy! And like, she's backing up and spinning, and I was like, run, run, dumb lady! <laughs> so this guy grabs me, and I'm like, again, again, and I'm hitting the buttons so I'm crazy. I'm like, get him off you, get him off you. He ain't nothing. He ain't nothing. So I push the zombie down. I'm like, I'm booking, I'm booking. And I, go out, the, the I go out the door. And then Barry's like, let me handle this. Like, I was like, Jill, I was like, get away from that crap. monster. Because he has this retarded gun. He just blows its head off. And I'm like, the next one I see, 
It's me. That's me. So I took my tiny Beretta. Pop, pop, pop. My pea pop, shooter pop. in a terrible situation. 50 bullets later, <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Yes, it's dead! But see, I ran out of ammo like 10 clips ago, and game, somehow I kept firing. The game doesn't stop there, though. Like, you go into the next room area, the first area you go to, and there's like this little back area that you go to get the first ink ribbon and like some bullets, and there's a dude lying on the ground. And you it, don't think nothing of it. it you just yeah, think he's a dead guy. It didn't It didn't even phase me back then. I just, I see him there. Well, I mean, all the enemies are dead guys anyways, but they're like... Mobile dead guys. You but just, just this the guy's dude a dead on the guy ground didn't mean anything to me for some reason. Like I thought he was part of the atmosphere. It's like oh whatever. When I went to step over and he grabbed me, and I was like oh no! <laughs> and then I kick his head off. But do and I was like that's right. That's what you get. <laughs> so, so I get my stuff and I go to the next room and I'm walking down this hallway. Could you? Could you? Could you? Could you? I make it all the way through the hallway, no issue. But I'm still. I got this thing in my chest. Like every door I open now. It's like an adventure. The screen goes black, it moves, I go in, it closes, and then I, I don't move, I just listen. Okay, then I can walk. Or you walk in that room and hear, uh, and you're like, where is that? <laughs> where is that? And you're ready for it. But the game shined in a different way because later on, as you're backtracking, running around, I had to go back through this hallway. And I've gone through the hallway like 14 times. And so you just like, this always clear. Don't have to worry yeah, about so that. I had that, I had that instinct. Until like, you run, run past window. That and dog. Boom, dogs. Dude, no, that was the biggest experience in video game terror in my life to this day. Because I'll never forget it. When the dog crashed through the window, I dropped the controller. Like, it, it shocked me so bad. 14 times of... Nothing. <laughs> I got this. Da, I, da, da, da. I was oh like, my I was god! Like, okay, I gotta go back and I gotta use this key. And that dog was like, and it did it at a camera angle too. It wasn't just the noise that the dog came through the window. The exact camera angle that it waited for was that the window was right here. It, it's and like my character was here, and the dog goes across the front of the screen as what, large as it can be. What, wasn't it shot? Wasn't it where the? Uh, it was literally like pointing at the window for that corner. No, the window. Or was like, it okay, away if from the window? If your vision is the camera, the window was here, at the oh, very that edge one. back yeah. of the screen, and he came through there, and I was like, I was like, tch, 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 tch. oh no! And I, I just like this, I just let it go, and the thing hit the ground, and then I'm stumbling for the controller because I'm dying. There's a dog jumping all over me, and I was like, oh no, oh no! And then I'm like, pop, pop. Pop, but I'm shooting everywhere. I'm like barely even hitting the dog. So I just decide, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> and I just leave that dog in there. I open the door, shut it, looked at the map, and found an alternate route. And was like, I'm never going back in that hallway again. <laughs> it's not happening. I remember, remember when I finally got to play the first Resident Evil. That, that, that damn thing scared the shit out of me. It, there was an atmosphere in the first game. The second game, before the second I, game had a few oddball things, but it was nowhere near as scary. I, yeah, I don't think it was as scary, but it raised the scope. The fact that you were in the city, mm -hmm. like, it starts in the city. I mean, okay, but, by today's standards, it's tame, and it doesn't feel yeah. that big to me. But back then, I felt like I could go anywhere. Like, right. it started me in the city. Like, this was happening. Like, it's like Leon, Leon gets, like... Basically, he drives. Well, it depends on who you play as. Leon, he drives into no, the city. No, in, in the first and he time stops. you play it, in the first time you play it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought and, you meant when the no, no. cop car gets hit. No, because, no, no, no. This is yeah. the immediate beginnings. Like in the very beginning during the cutscene, Leon's basically a couple blocks into the city, mm -hmm. and he stops. He's like, "What the hell's going on?" Well, you know, he me. jumps out and looks Before, around. And he tries to help someone and keep freaks going, out. But you know me. Just to put it in perspective. Leon is my favorite character also, but I did not pick him first. I picked you picked Claire. I, I was actually getting ready to Because I her. hated Chris. I hated Chris, so I ended up using Jill. So when the next game came about, through instinct, I was like, fuck him. And I went you didn't directly like the main, to her. You didn't like the male character. Right. I jumped, but... I, the, the difference between the two is, it's like, Claire actually starts at like a little rest stop restaurant yep. on the outskirts. Yeah, she's in that diner. She's in the truck well, stop he's, diner. He's actually not that far from her. He pulls up on the street right behind the diner because he goes into the okay, alleyway so that, where that she must opens actually up the be, door. That must be more in town than it looked. Does yeah, that it, look like it was more of like, it, it does you know, like, like a, that. You know, like half a mile outside but, uh, of the town. But he doesn't leave. Okay, the reason you can tell is because his truck is right there. 
he leaves the truck. Oh, well, we don't get to see that. We see him pop, pop, pop. That was a clean shot. What's going on here? And he goes running down this uh, running down this alleyway, and a door opens, and he turns around like, or oh, Drew, and she's like, no, no and he's like, get, get down. down. I'm about to rock she drops, this. He's like, boosh. That right. dude's dead. He's like, come on, we gotta get out of here. And then he finds a cop car. Right. They but drive no, further he, into the town, so you get yeah. to see like different parts of the town. You're like, oh man, I want to go there. I want to go there. It man, felt like this so be sweet. huge. But it's really sad how linear it was. It was, I mean, but it didn't, give now, us, it didn't give us that feeling though, and that's what counts. Yeah. Is it, it's in here, man. Like, yeah, they they couldn't give us. They could have. One done of the that cool things box, though but, is they did go back, and. Two of my favorite games, other than, or that were like the spin-off games, yeah. were the Outbreak games. Resident Evil Outbreak and Outbreak 2. You know, I like this those day, because I've never played it because I was under the mistaken impression that it could only be played online when it was introduced. No, you can so play I single skipped player. It and didn't even, didn't even try I it. I think you can, I, I can't remember properly, I think the second one had split screen co-op. I don't remember right. Don't worry, man. But, I heard I know you could beat a, it one play. Yeah, there I, was a single player, I and that, that's what I played, I played a lot both of. of them. Because I didn't have the network adapter for my PS2 when I finally got it. I played both of them under the impression that they would be good. I was I, very disappointed. I enjoyed them. I really did. I thought it was actually really Resident interesting. Resident Evil has a lot of break-offs, too. Like, you well, talk about Resident Evil Dead Aim, and there's two rail shooters. There's like three rail well, shooters now. Well, actually, Dead Aim and Survivor are real rail shooters, but... No. Dead Aim is different. Dead Aim is weird because um, as you're playing, you play in Resident Evil. And Dead Aim took the first step to Resident Evil 4 because when you're running and everything, you're Resident Evil. When something comes at you, you stop, and when, you hit, the trigger, mode, when you hit the trigger, it zooms into his face, and you see through his eye, and it turns into like this awkward first person with terrible control shit. Yeah, so <laughs> ba basically it was Resident Evil... For one part, it was like and then the it was beta. House of the Dead. It was it was like a beta version of four. Like they they figured out that they needed to be over his shoulder and give him more control. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got the two rail shooters that you were thinking of though, were uh, for the Aren't Wii. Are there three now? No, there's only two that I know of. There might have been a third one. Because Relic Chronicles and the, the Dark Side. Well, isn't there one that's been released on the PS3 now? That's a rail shooter. I'm almost I, positive. If it is, it might. Just be like the a combination of those of two. two. That's very possible. Okay. It's I'll like you, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I I was never a huge fan of rail shooters. I liked playing them in the arcades. I liked House of the Dead. The whatnot. House of the Dead when games it came were out really for the there. Wii. When I, I bought House of the Dead two and three for the Wii, I was like, yes. But you know, I I've, I've never been a huge fan of rail shooters other than House of the Dead in the arcade. But I was, the in, I was in a time crisis. Time crisis three. I yeah. Get, yeah, that is a time, time crisis. crisis. That otherwise, was otherwise, I think I agree with you. Usually, but they're a little too. Mo most of them are just like, oh no, we have to go shoot things. Bang, bang, woo. Like, I like the idea. Of Umbrella Chronicles the stuff in the third time. When that crisis. came out, I still had a Wii at the house, and I rented. It. I sat down with my sister. We sh we blew through the game because I love Resident Evil. She likes shooting shit. Yeah. She still does. <laughs> Perfect I mean, combination. She, she plays a lot of fucking Call of Duty, Black Ops 2. Right. She shoots okay. the shit out of everybody. Well, we also liked playing House of the Dead in the arcades. I was like, well, it's kind of like House of the Dead, except it's Resident Evil. You kind of liked that because you played it too. So, The Umbrella Chronicles was like the story of Resident Evil just on a rail shoot. I hear they take some liberties, And it was a lot of though, fun. There is, there is some liberties here and there They're for certain things. Not, not that the other Resident Evils don't exactly take liberties themselves. Like, for one, for one massive liberty that I absolutely cannot effing justify ever. One, if Resident Evil Zero takes place before Resident Evil 2, uh, I'm sorry, Resident Evil Zero takes place before Resident Evil 1. And Resident Evil 2 takes place only a month or so after Resident Evil 1. Like, they come back, they're told, no, that's a bunch of bullshit, Jill's put on suspension, the, uh, Chris, Chris leaves. leaves the country to go to Europe to check on something. Barry leaves also. And Barry leaves, with, Blair, Barry leaves, Barry's a weird thing because he appears on the Game Boy in a game with Leon also. And they went off somewhere in, like, Britain. Or some shit. Yeah, I I don't remember what the hell that was about. But we'll skip that because I don't know yeah. much about it except for that it exists. But if that's true, 
two characters make a violent disappearance. One, that Billy dude. Oh, Billy How Cullen? far could he have actually gotten? Is he dead? Did he make it? They nuked the effing city. You get what I'm saying? I'm here? trying to I see because I did go out and buy the Umbrella Chronicle or the um, uh, the archives book. Okay. When that came out. And in the archives book it actually has like a list of everyone. I don't remember. I'm wanting to say they said he got away, but he probably died. I'm wanting to say See, now there's another character. He in was the never same seen aspect. again. Rebecca Chambers is an enigma. Okay, first off, Rebecca Chambers has to be the dumbest person on the face of the planet. Case in point, if Resident Evil Zero happens before Resident Evil 1, they should put some thought into this. All right. She goes into a house with zombies and bugs and creatures. Well, it wasn't a house. It was the uh, Umbrella Officer Street. Right, school. regardless. She goes into there, big problems, barely survives. At the end, she's like, Billy, just go. I'm going to be the dumbest fucking person on the face of the planet. I'm going to go in that creepy mansion over there. <laughs> She's looking for the rest of her squad. To so work. she goes into the creepy mansion. Yep. And when she meets Chris, she quite literally says, I don't know what's going on. There's well, monsters everywhere. The thing is, you also have to remember. And I don't have a gun. And I have nothing to protect myself. But I got these two first aid cans and you can have one. See, that irritated me What was she doing? She walked in there and was like, this house seems safe. I'll be fine. See, then she gets that in there and she's like, and you she's like running. Like, I made a mistake! You, you, gotta, you gotta remember one thing, though. Resident Evil 1 started the series. Resident Evil 0 didn't come out until, like, what? I realize that. And it's, it's the same issue that comes up with games as far back as... Anything that they try to do this with, they try to create a continual storyline. Somewhere or another, yep. they want to add a character, and in, in, in Resident Evil 2, they did a side book, where instead of showing her in glory on the screen, and don't get me wrong, I'm not classifying her as a favorite character or nothing, I could live Ada without Long? her. No, no, I'm just, I'm talking about, I'm still talking about... Claire. No. Oh, Rebecca? I'm still talking about Rebecca. Okay. I could live without her. She, don't mean, she means nothing to me. But for the fact that they designed the character, they need to give it some caring. And they did. They simply said in the side book, by the way, she's dead. <laughs> I think that that happens after, well, after two, during three. But two and she three take place at the same uh, time. Three takes place the day before RE2 starts. That makes no sense because that black dude is dead. The cop that's in there at the lockers... You see him in Resident Evil 3. Yeah, but... And that means I, that I, Leon I, met him when he was alive. So part two is taking place I don't know almost that. an hour before three. If not, they're separated by a matter of hours. Like, it happens at almost the same time. But Resident Evil 3 is weird, too, because there's a part where Jill loses consciousness for a day or two. Yeah. So th th this could start before two and end after two. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it, it would end at the end of two. It has because to Because the new kids... It has to end after two, because in part two, they escape, and the only thing that blows up is the facility. In part three, they drop a nuclear bomb on the city. That's right, yeah. So if they're in the train... Because I keep thinking that the facility blowing oh, up is the result of the nuke. Yeah. I don't know why I always thought that. Even though it's like self-destruct has been initiated, it's like oh no. Yeah, that that was just the that was the plant self-destructing. So my guess is they're separated by a matter of hours. It's a possibility. And yeah, I, I only played a little bit of three. No offense. It was pretty sweet. Three, it's real short. Three you could forever. literally beat it in a sitting. One sitting. I about still. Four hours. I'm 25 years old, and I still feel like if I play it, well, and I'm running around. And when Nemesis pops up, I still feel like I'm Dude, like, ah! No, at first he scared me, like the first two times. Then he becomes this annoying piece of shit that constantly is like, you're finally getting making some headway. You're like, oh my fucking god, I finally did that puzzle. That was annoying as shit. And then out of nowhere you hear, doom, stars. You're like, damn it! So you go upstairs, you wait ten minutes, he breaks through a door. Stars, you kill him. Go in the next door, he comes through the wall. Stars. I'm like, this is a cliche joke. Like, there's one area where you fight him in a car garage, 
you drop it. Take his stuff, walk through the door, and he goes bust. to the hallway. Yeah. He shows up in the hallway, opens the door. Kill him. Take his stuff, walk into this uh, clock tower area. He breaks through the wall. You stars! I'm like, come on! But you are supposed to fight him at the clock tower. Then you kill him. Then you go up the clock tower. Then he's at the top of the clock tower. Some stars! <laughs> oh my god! So you kill him. You go downstairs. He breaks through the window. Oh, some stars! Stars! And then, like, come then, on! And, and the best part about that that moment is he tentacle whips Jill right in the freaking head or whatever. She goes, oh no! And hits the ground infected. No, and that was that was after. Because you still, even after you beat him there, you go outside, and she's like, finally, this nightmare is over, and there's a helicopter coming. Oh, yeah, he and shoots he's like, a helicopter. Stars with a bazooka. <laughs> like, Stars with a bazooka. It. And all of a sudden, you're just like, where did okay. you get the bazooka? <laughs> so he shoots the helicopter down, and then you fight him there, and you, you kill him, but then he's not dead. Because right after you kill him, he gets up and there's like a cutscene, like he said, where he like shoots you with this crap. Well, it, it, it's like Carlos is like peppering the shit out of this guy, right. but he had already tentacle whipped you, which is all you needed to do. You're in, Jill becomes infected, yeah. and Carlos is like, Aah! it's like I have, it's like I have South American accent. Oh wait, no, it's American now. You know something they added to part three that they took away from us? What? The dodge function. Yeah. In part three, you didn't have to, like, okay, now you could stun him and hit him, right? Right. Well, in part three, there were other ways to do that, where they'd come at you and they'd go to hit you, and you could shoot them in, like, the side of the arm, and then as they came at you, you would, like, dive under them, do, like, a roll into, like, a crouching position with better aim, and fire off a couple shots, and then a guy behind you would come to get you, and you'd, like, jump your shoulder up into him, backing, you, backing them off, and you'd dodge the left. And, like, we didn't get that, but we still didn't get like the basic dodge which was really useful what was that how do you dodge because in five remember. all i can do is run guy the by sorry run by the guy while he misses guy no it's me in three guy run oh because we we didn't get like all the cool little rolling stuff yeah you did we did i don't know yeah. carlos carlos was a monster if you use carlos i like, guess in the I, mercenaries, I really sucked at that he'll game. dive roll he'll even he'll even like pivot off a wall like he's in a corner and guys are all over and he'll be like pop and he'll like roll across the side of the wall and do like a spin move so he's behind him and shoot him like bitch 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 like he doesn't <laughs> care he's crazy and he had that sight on his gun his gun was special yeah where he could get that extra sight and he could just womp on people well he was also a special forces so yeah but i mean I there, there was a lot of great things with the games i know we didn't get a chance to talk about the movies no but, the, but, but i think that i think that this could be a bigger discussion in general yeah. it's just that to rather keep this, this on is more a, like a memories of how we started Resident Evil. Right. So that, that's, that's actually what the discussion is. That's fine. I think I think that we've I think we've said enough on it. It's just that we're definitely coming back to this. Resident oh, yeah. Evil is something we could talk about for days, months, years. Like it's huge. A and finally, when we get to the Resident Evils that I actually really played, well, yeah. see, I, I can add more to. I'm the, really how about sad. this? How about the next the next thing we'll be talking about the the generational climb of Resident Evil. We can do we'll that. We'll talk about the advancement. So, uh, this has been the chairs then? I said what you need to say? No, I'm good. good to go, so uh, stay tuned. Yep.